Hare Krishna, Dandavats, Prabhus, and Maharajas, welcome to this <clears throat> panel discussion from Ministry of Education. This evening, a very interesting, very important area on reading of Srila Prabhupada books. Uh, I often feel that we are living in a, what I feel uh, call over an over communicated world. Suddenly, the whole world is communicating. Hmm? The animal kingdom, the bird kingdom, the nature, nature around us is full of communication. But in human life, the communication has to be very meaningful. But suddenly we find, in like my, my generation, there was no cell phones. Then, you know, there was no social media, no internet. We all have, all of us have come from that era because we have now see how dif different it was. And suddenly we find today it's a must understanding. Uh, today you got to have, you know, then came email. Okay. So once in a couple of days, you got to check your email. Then came you see, WhatsApp, now three times a day, at least you got to check your WhatsApp. If you are running a center, you have to manage your community page on Facebook suddenly, you know. And now, you see, then this pandemic, you have Zoom meetings used to be on and off, right? It's because everybody got together. So now we see that communication is just increasing, increasing. Now, in this in this our quest for communication, the real purpose of human life, <clears throat> that is, that is, you know, the Shastra, the traditional role of Shastra, you know, the only thing available in society practically was Shastra. There were no fiction. There were no fiction writer. There were no other. So how to, in this, in this uh, commotion that is going on, uh, communicating trillion almost a trillion messages a day on WhatsApp now, or maybe more. So what? how can we actually keep our focus or not miss this great opportunity of human form of life? So this is all about. So we have uh, our senior um, <clears throat> Vasu Gospu who is here, Bhakti Rishamat Maharaj is here, Bhakti Rizolina Bhakti Vinod Maharaj is here. So this, Today's discussion is for how, what practical steps we can take, what kind of in our yatras for our Indian, uh, for devotees in India and overseas. So I personally also feel this is a great emergency not to, to maintain, to not to lose focus and to maintain our focus, not to fritter away our energy. Human brain has only so much can handle. So yes, today this is discussion is all about. So please, I request uh, all of you to uh, come in, please. Hare Krishna, Benavats. So Maharaj, we start with Bhakti Rasamat Maharaj. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from the my obeisances to all the assembled devotees and to all those who are watching this program. Uh, as we all know, Srila Prabhupada repeatedly emphasized the importance of reading his books. And the Bhagavatam itself declares that this is a spiritual revolution, Viplavaha, that can uh, cause a revolution in the lives of the sinful lives of people at large. So these books are not ordinary books. And they are not revolutionary books like the books of, uh, say, Marx and Lenin or uh, the books of, you know, some other material revolutionary. But these are books that cause a transformation of the heart and enable people to become spiritually successful. Uh, and that uh, medium has become available to us through these wonderful books. I mean, I'm sure that all of us have experienced that when we are absorbing ourselves in Srila Prabhupada's books, we get transported into the spiritual world. And we actually feel the experience of not being in this world. We derive tremendous inspiration, tremendous guidance, tremendous direction, tremendous clarity. 
you know, a taste comes up. Uh, it's it's a kind of a feeling where your intellect and your whole being is being bathed in the soothing waters of uh, these books. Uh, I think that if we emphasize this more and more on the devotee community, then uh, a lot of our issues will get uh, resolved and uh, devotees will feel much more inspired and happy and the people outside also will be able to transform their lives uh, very, very substantially. These are some preliminary comments. Yeah, thank you, Maharaj. So, uh, Maharaj, Bhaktivinoda Maharaj, how do you, um, in your yatra, for example, what steps, Maharaj, practically are you taking to ensure you have a very vibrant yatra uh, uh, in Tamil Nadu and in Kerala as well, a large zone you're commanding. So what practical aspect, uh, steps you're taking Maharaj to ensure that devotees actually are reading Srila Prabhupada's books? Oh, <clears throat> my obeisances to everybody here and all those who are also going to be watching this later or doing it now. Hare Krishna. Um, there is no doubt, I don't want to belabor the point about the necessity for delving into Prabhupada's books. And like Prabhupada said, scrutinizingly study my books. Uh, it's very amazing the instructions that Prabhupada has given about studying his books. There is no second thought about that. And I don't want to discuss that too much. And like Maharaj has already mentioned, uh, but the importance of Prabhupada's books. I understand uh, those books to be extremely useful, important and vital for our personal development and also for the movement's growth and influence in society, the way Srila Prabhupada envisioned. I would like to say that my understanding after absorbing a lot of time in Prabhupada's books and teaching them, and I even work on the BBT in Malayalam language and we publish books, I feel that ours is like a Sankirtan governance of the books, by the books, for the books of Prabhupada is what is the way I've understood it. That we must all absorb ourselves in reading these amazing information uh, in the books, internalize it, and also help to spread it into our communities and beyond those boundaries into the secular world outside. This is our bounden duty. Distribute those books, Study and read those books for yourself. Teach those books. I think this is what is the core aspect of Prabhupada's mission. And there is no doubt that we have to do that under any circumstances as a great responsibility. If at all, we want a very solid future. And if we want acceptance, and if we want to show everybody how these books are real, their explanation of the reality and truth of life and what philosophers and scientists and thinkers and rulers have grappled with over a long period of time in the history of humankind. And what they're looking for is what is there in these books, that elixir of life that's provided. And it's a reality. And Prabhupada made it a reality. He lived his books uh, the, there is a very interesting, uh, there is a Srila Prabhupada disciple who lives just close to uh, Iskan, our Hyderabad temple. He's a low-key person having a government job. He was a young man and became a devotee uh, when Iskan Hyderabad was inaugurated and got initiated. So I asked him um, that, um, in fact, um, Mm, there was another person uh, sitting, we were just sitting by and the question was asked, in fact, he, what interaction you had with Srila Prabhupada. Now, he said an interesting point. 
he kind of name he was obviously he was a young man he asked like point blank why we have trouble you know, you know disciples sometimes we see them falling down or leaving the movement so shila prapa said just one line because they are not reading my books so this is so essential like mother's milk this is absolutely necessary for the growth for our survival so <clears throat> so vasudev uh, prabhu so what the personal realizations as a long time iskan leader you know and uh, you know <clears throat> uh kind of you know you are a very very well known figure around the world so please we request your input on the subject yeah if you don't mind i would like to read from chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela uh, chapter 6 text 135 beautiful yes please Pra- pramaner madhye shruti praman pradan shruti je mukhya artha kahe se se praman so the translation in english is although there is other evidence the evidence given in the vedic version must be taken as foremost vedic versions understood directly are first class evidence so if you don't mind should i read some of the purport please works that should be consulted are shri jiva goswami's tatva sandarbha 1011 shri labala devi bhushan's commentary on that and the following verses of the brahma sutra shastra yonitvat Vedanta Sutra one one three, Tarka Pratishtanat, Vedanta Sutra two one eleven, and Shrutis to Shabda Mulatvat, Vedanta Sutra two one twenty seven, as commented upon by Sri Ramanuja Charya, Sri Madhva Charya, Sri Nimbarka Charya, and Sri Baladevi Dibushan. In his book Sarva Samvadini, Sri Lajiva Goswami has noted that although there are ten kinds of evidence. direct perception the vedic version historical reference hypotheses and so on and although they are all generally accepted as evidence the person presenting a hypothesis reading the vedic version perceiving or interpreting by his experience is certain to be imperfect in four ways that is he is subject to committing mistakes to becoming illusion to cheating and to having imperfect senses although the evidence may be correct the person himself is in danger of being misled due to his material defects apart from the direct presentation there is a chance that an interpretation may not be perfect therefore the conclusion is that only a direct presentation can be considered evidence an interpretation cannot be accepted as evidence but may, may be considered proof of evidence so there is more in this purport but i wanted to read uh right. from the purport of chaitanya charitamrita madhya leela 2352 uh-huh. prabhu kahe anya avatar shastra dware jani kalite avatar toiche shastra vakya mani and uh, the translation is sri chaitanya mahaprabhu replied as in other ages an incarnation is accepted according to the directions of shastras in this age of kali an incarnation of god should be accepted in that way and the purport according to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu this is the way an incarnation should be accepted shri narottam das thakur says sadhu shastra guru vakya chitte te koriya aikya one should accept the thing as genuine by studying the words of saintly people the spiritual master and the shastra the actual center is the shastra the revealed scripture if a spiritual master does not speak according to the revealed scripture he is not to be accepted similarly if a saintly person does not speak according to the shastra he is not a saintly person the shastra is the center for all unfortunately at the present moment people do not refer to the shastras there's more now the point uh-huh. the point is that our ideology is based on vedic literature uh, uh-huh. as prabhupad quoted in the first 
purport that I read. Shastra Yonitvat, uh, Vedanta Sutras were compiled by Vyas, who compiled the Mahabharata, which is where Bhagavad Gita is from. And he compiled the Veda, he divided the one Veda into four Vedas. And he says that uh, knowledge is born from Shastras. So Prabhupada clearly, you know, is saying we should study Shastras. And reading Prabhupada's books means Prabhupada's commentaries on Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, throws light on the Vedic literature. That Prabhupada himself, as we just heard from his purports, is the center of all. In other words, we have based our ideology on these Vedic literature. So we shouldn't deviate from the Vedic literature. And, un and if, unless we know the Vedic literature very well, then, you know, we're not going, we, there, there, there will be a chance of deviation. And we're seeing it. Uh, we're seeing, and it's not something new, because uh, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur wrote, and then our late God brother Suhotra Swami, he also wrote about the deviant sects S S E C S C what is it sect S C E T S S C E T S yes right so there were many deviant sects that came up in Bengal after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's uh, uh, you know Jivan Kal the lifetime of Mahaprabhu and those sects are still functioning and they pre they present a perverted idea of bhakti. Uh, if you go to Navadvip near Mayapur, well, Mayapur is part of Navadvip, you can see people rolling on the ground and crying out, Goranga, Goranga. And then, you know, they do all kinds of nonsense. So Prabhupada wanted us to study Shastras. I think I, 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 I spoke too long. I don't know. I'll end it here. You can come back to me. Okay. I'm still with you. Thank you, Vasugos Prabhu. That was good to directly hear from Shil Prabhupada's purport. And welcome, Maharaj. Yeah. <laughs> like Peter Drucker says, if something can go wrong, it will go wrong. My experience is there is never a power cut. Hyderabad, like other metros, is a quite advanced city. But whenever there is going to be a Zoom meeting, we can expect a power cut. <laughs> yeah, I'm on my... UPS, I don't know how long that will last. Okay. So, Maharaj, you have the Sorry floor. You got disconnected in between. Yeah, so I got disconnected. I was just trying to say about the... Your question to me was what efforts that we were taking to do something in our yatra and everything. I was just coming to say that we set up a Bhakti Vedanta Academy many years back, about nearly 20 years back. And since then, we were going slow and doing Bhakti Shastri sessions for a congregation. Uh, and we also, just before the lockdown, we started more intensely. And during this last two years, we have upped it quite a bit. Uh, we have done uh, several new initiatives. We are, I am personally involved in it directly. Uh, we are now teaching Bhakti Shastri for nearly six batches in Tamil online. About 130 students are online and they're completing their Bhakti Shastri. We also have in English language two batches, which I am also involved in. We have a Bhakti Vaibhav session for very senior devotees. And we have in Malayalam language, we have started Bhakti Shastri also. So in three languages, we're doing Bhakti Shastri and we have nearly 200 students online doing something or the other. Plus we have other outreach programs. Uh, and I am, in my capacity as a chairman of the South Indian Division Council, we are trying to move some understanding of how education should be made almost mandatory for the leaders, at least. So I think we are already formed some committees in each of the states to look into Bhakti Shastri and all such educational programs in the vernacular. And I think in the next SIDC meeting, we are coming together to make a proposal 
for the whole of the South India in upping its educational capacities and making sure that all our leaders at least are to some extent educated and make it like some sort of a pre-qualification requirement for a person to be a leader so that he gets into that type of a sense and also absorbs himself in that and giving that type of education to his congregations, to the people anywhere else. That's in short, before the power goes off, I thought I shouldn't crunch it and tell you. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Much. So this effort is going on. Right. Thank you. That was very really nice. Yes, we have come a long way, I feel. I remember Maharaj in like 89, VIH 88 was started and I was um, uh, study. I was I went to Vrindavan 89. VIH, that was like a, it was taking off reading of, you know, and studying, you know, Srila Prabhupada's books. <clears throat> so I have an important question here that uh, you see, these books have created made this is what defines us, these books. There are a lot of Krishna devotees in India. Uh, we can't deny that or around the world. There could be, there are. But we are Prabhupada Nugas, and that's what differentiates Srila Prabhupada books differentiate us from us from other devotees or other sampradayas or other paths. And that is what probably gives us the potency, like we are the leading. Uh, we are the preaching uh, arm of the Lord Chaitanya's movement. And we are well, obvious kind of doing better than anybody else. And I feel that potency comes from. So I have a very important point now that that, uh, that um, impression that is going around is actually now to, uh, to, to, uh, we need bridge books actually. Srila Prabhupada books are too orthodox or like too, you know, too traditional and too radical. So we need kind of bridge books to cater to the younger generation. And then let them, uh, once they come, then we can introduce. So I've seen cases like where, uh, you know, I mean, even after two, three years of being in the movement, connected as a congregational member, but, uh, there are uh, devotees who have not yet studied, started on with uh, Srila Prabhupada books. What's your comment on that, Maharaj? You're asking me, right? Oh, uh, actually, yeah, probably you can. I was actually meaning to ask Bhakti Vinod Maharaj. Yeah, yeah, but probably okay. both of you can. No, no, no. You can start no. with Maharaj. Before his electric current goes away. Yeah. <laughs> so you, can, you can go. For well, it. I, I, you see, the I made a differentiation that one thing in education that we are focusing on is Prabhupada's books, mostly for our congregations and our devotees. That's what the education ministry is doing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Apart from that is education and our presence in the academia. That is another big topic, which I think uh, is very interesting. How to make a solid academic presence using Prabhupada's books. And I think generally Hindus are pretty poor. We are we in comparison to the Buddhists, the Christians, the Muslims, or others, they have a solid presence in the academic sense, and we don't have much of that. That's one area of education. The other thing you're talking about is generally in terms of preaching outreach, that people don't instantly find reading these books with traditional stuff like Sanskrit shlokas and all that. They look at it in a formidable sense. Uh, especially in this age when a lot of hate against religion and rage against religion is, uh, you know, spread, especially in the Western world and amongst the rationalists and so-called free speech, free thinkers, etc. So how to actually step inside is what you're talking about. Uh, true that we need to have some stepping stones in between. And that also could be of an educational sort. I am very keen on looking at addressing social concerns, which Prabhupada has done to a great degree, explaining how the Bhagavat, uh, in the Bhagavatam, he explains brilliantly how it is a solution for the world's problems. Talk today about 
climate change, talk about environmental problems, talk about fires everywhere, coronavirus, political problems, religious problems, and social problems, and you know, equality, and uh, cry for so many things. All of these things should be addressed. And uh, that way we should build a bridge between society and Prabhupada's books. And I think that's where we could produce bridge books. I did a conference recently on, uh, you know, a few years back, I should say, quite a few years back, on environment. And uh, I found that we don't have a book. And I went on asking the communications ministry, what's the stand that is gone as, which is an issue that's spread all over the world and is raging and people are talking about it. We didn't have, we had an old book called Divine Nature. And that need to be revised because times have changed and many things have happened. And I went right up to Mukunda Maharaj in Australia and spoke to him also. He's the one who wrote that book. Brilliant, very brilliant composition. So somehow we didn't have that type of a, you know, bridge book that we could, and we could speak tons and say lots of things about these things. Yeah, true. I think that between Prabhupada's books and the society, if you're talking about the preaching we do and relevance uh, to society, we need those type of books. And it should be educationally based so that they can use that as a stepping stone to get into solutions that the Vedic compendium provides in terms of Prabhupada's books and what it can afford. I would say that that's another area. Uh, maybe we have not so much actively explored as of now, and which is a great need now. Right. Mara, uh, so that doesn't make sure the Prabhupada's book redundant, right? No, not at all. Because in principle, it contains all those solutions. It's just the terminologies and the different type of... Like even today, you know, all the philosophers, like from Socrates to Aristotle to Plato and to you name it, all of them are still, uh, you know, being quoted and, uh, you know, philosophical discussions have been being provoked on the basis of the statements they make. You talk about rationalists like Rene Descartes and all of them. You will see that all over the place in all the philosophical schools and all of them. Because the only philosophy prevalent is the Western philosophy. And the entire Christian theology and their whole religion is based on the borrowed uh, philosophy of the Greeks. Western thought is all on the basis of Greek philosophy. And uh, the Vedic philosophy somehow or the other has got dumbed down over a period of time with all the religious, uh, you know, stuff. If you look at the holy history of the Christians, you will see that inquisitions and that, and they destroyed a lot of scriptures everywhere. Uh, many things happened. So uh, somehow the great wealth of uh, Indian thought and tradition and the scriptures and how it answers all the problems and everything should be brought out. And I think Prabhupada has done a brilliant job, a job of a genius in picturing this and answering these philosophical questions and presenting the reality and the truth. And so therefore it will never become redundant, these books. It's just we need to know time, place, circumstances, and how to apply them and bring out those principles. Right, Maharaj. Thank you. So, same question, uh, Raslamat Maharaj. Maharaj, you can come in on that. Um, yeah. I think Srila Prabhupada has mentioned several times in his books that he would like his followers to also write. In as much as Srila Prabhupada emphasized the reading of the books and instructions on reading the books are everywhere, uh, he also spoke quite a bit about the importance of his devotees' writing. Instructions regarding writing are not as copious, as frequent as the ones on reading. But nevertheless, there are enough instructions to indicate that Srila Prabhupada definitely wanted us to write. And he wanted us to write based on his books. So Srila Prabhupada's books will always be the foundation. Therefore, we have the saying, books are the basis. So Prabhu, by books, we mean Prabhupada's books. So Prabhupada's books will be the basis uh, for ISKCON in general, and also for other books that are to come. So other books that devotees will write uh, now, 
that I have written in the recent past and will write in the near and distant future will all ultimately be based on Srila Prabhupada's books. So that is an important part of uh, uh, other books to be written. Mm -hmm. Now, some of these books uh, may not be in the category of what we call bridge preaching. Mm -hmm. Some of these books will be directly uh, relating to deep study of the scriptures. For example, uh, Bhurijan Prabhu has written his books on Bhagavad Gita and uh, Ashimad Bhagavatam, explaining study guides, right? Surrender and to me. And so these are very useful and uh, very, very relishable and important for devotees. Your question, however, I think pertains to bridge preaching, which is meant for outsiders, those who are not actually devotees. So we need both categories of books written by devotees. Uh, coming to the bridge preaching, uh, I recognize very much the importance of that. And I heartily agree with what uh, Bhakti Vinod Maharaj has said uh, in this matter. We definitely need books on everything that is of relevance and importance to the people out there in the world. And the whole the term bridge implies that we need some uh, method to connect with them and make ourselves relevant in the minds of people. So, it definitely, there is a great need for bridge preaching. Uh, there is one matter that I think also needs consideration, which is that how long will this bridge be? So the bridge in the bridge preaching should not be such that you never really reach Prabhupada's books. Yes. It's bridges, you just keep going on the bridge and walking, and it's like an endless bridge that goes on the and on. Never lands, you know. <laughs> the bridge never lands. Yeah, it's just an eternal bridge. So we right. can't keep people forever on the bridge. Right. So the, the bridge books have to be designed in such a way and uh, the devotees have to utilize those books in such a way that the people we are connecting to through these books will eventually come to Srila Prabhupada's books right. and sooner or later. So if that connection is not established uh, sooner rather than later, then the bridge just extends and extends and extends. Mm -hmm. So we have to see it as a nuanced thing that there is a dire need for preaching uh, I mean, through these bridge books. Uh, at the same time, uh, we need to ensure that the um, bridge is not too long. And at the same time, there are also many and that will be directly attracted to Srila Prabhupada's books. We shouldn't uh, reduce the distribution of the Prabhupada's books and the encouraging encouragement of other people to read Prabhupada's books directly. Because even though times have changed, but uh, you know, you never know how different people get affected by, positively affected by uh, various parts of Srila Prabhupada's books. So I think it has to go hand in hand. Yes, Maharaj. Thank you. <clears throat> I feel, thank you, Maharaj. That was quite interesting. That <clears throat> we, <clears throat> sorry for the bad throat, uh, viral season. This, uh, the whole energy of the movement, our energy or the global energy of our very eco deva devki putra eva, you know, this verse of uh, Bhagavad Gita Mahatmya by Adi Shankara is given a wonderful, um, you know, formula for uniting the whole human energy. Let there be one book, let there be one God, let there be one mantra, let there be one work. You know, whole human energy. So I, I feel that whole our movement and the whole human society, all uh, energy can be, you know, under Srila Prabhupada's teaching, we can unite under the banner and, you know, all thinking in the same direction and producing synergy. Hmm? One plus one becomes not two, one plus one becomes 11. And Srila Prabhupada's teaching so much he has spoken like, you know, Sahasrani, like, Vishma Pitama Bhagavad describes it thousands, fought thousands of battles, spoke on thousands of topics. Srila Prabhupada has covered pretty much everything we can conceive of in his letters, in his conversations. 
so we can dive into that nectar the whole our uh, movement and for now and for next 9500 years or whatever so i would request uh, vashu ghosh prabhu on this point that uh, <clears throat> how our whole energy you know we can unite under that banner of shila proper's teaching of uh, you know um, this is um, that uh, how you practically you are also our iskan bureau a vice chair for in india and uh, how we can actually you know <clears throat> like uh, well, unite uh, <clears throat> or we can say the well, let's say that everybody is just uh, enamored everybody is just uh, moved and just occupied you know with uh, shila prabhupad's uh, nectarian words yes prabhu vasu goes for i i couldn't exactly understand what you want me to speak about yeah actually as a <laughs> as a bureau vice chair yeah you are an important figure in india so my question is how do you suggest we can unite all our minds and and then um shila prabhupad's books how can that books be like everybody has one engagement or uh, let's say is focused on on studying on uh, you know shila prabhupad's work or let's say devoted to these books we may read other so much material is out there but our devotion to how to inculcate that mood of surrender to these books mm -hmm. from the grassroots public our grassroots right. xyz devotees you know well i think i think we've made it compulsory but i don't know how uh, strict we are on second initiation uh, would uh, depend on devotees uh, passing the bhakti shastri exam and so bhakti shastri exam is a, a comprehensive course of study of prabhupada's books so that's that making popularizing bhakti shastri exam is is important of course the bhakti shastri exam in my humble opinion is a western style education although the subject matter is you know gita bhagavatam chaitanya charitamrita so in that way the subject matter is of course vedic literature the ancient system for brahmanas is memorization and uh, of course prabhupad used to comment uh, many times that in kali yuga people are less intelligent prabhupad's comment is based on the verse in the bhagavatam in the first canto right prayenal payusha sabya kalo asmin yuge janaha manda sumanda mataya manda bhagya hi upadrutaha people are agitated their life life span is not very long and they're dull headed and uh, that dull headedness is the pursuit of material happiness when in fact you have to give it all up at the time of death so now to change people uh, it's very difficult you know it's not easy you walk on the street there are no devotees but in india it's a different story we were walking with prabhupad on the juhu beach and he said more or less everyone in india is somewhat krishna conscious so you know it was the the system it was tradition culture whatever you want to call it that people read gita and, and mahabharata ramayana even the sikhs who don't worship the deities but in every gurudwara there used to be a mahabharata ramayana and in the guru granth there's uh, you know the name of rama and krishna i mean this was the habit all over they call the temple in amritsar hari mandir you know but they can't say hari they say har mandir instead of hari mandir so you know pronunciation changed but you know reverence for hari hari nam and this is all over india chaitanya mahaprabhu spread hari nam but 
Even the other Vaishnava Sampradayas, they all, you know, follow the Bhagavatam. They all worship Krishna or Vishnu. I, I was with Prabhupada in Tirupati, and we came in front of Lord Balaji, and Prabhupada did a full dandavat in front of the deity, which, you know, in uh, Ramanuja Sampradaya, they don't do. But that's the Gaudiya Sampradaya. Anyway, he said, Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bajami, and, you know, Balaji is Bal Krishna. So, you know, you can see behind me uh, Prabhupada in the Hyderabad public garden. And, uh, you know, in Hyderabad, Prabhupada uh, had a lecture with uh, government, six ministers of the government at the time. And he said, Balaji's money should be used for Balaji. So, you know, in India, people are, you know, there's Jagannath, there's Balaji, there's Ranganath, Udipi Sri Krishna, you go all the Rukmini, Vital in Pandarpur, all over the country, people are worshiping Krishna. So it's, it's an easier task in India. And it's a much more difficult task in, the, in these lands of Malachas and Yavanas, where I happen to be at the present moment, where, you know, people are just blind, totally blind to, you know, the concepts of Vedic culture and the, uh, the concepts of Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, and then Prema. So it's a monumental task. And... You know, another thing, if you don't have those sanskaras, if you are not given training in Vedic culture in the childhood, but if you're given this malecha and yavana training, it's very easy to go back to that type of attraction. Uh, wow, lucky I was in India all these years, but I see here, you know, it's, it's to merge into this type of uh, Western life is very easy. What can I say? I mean, to it, reading Prabhupada's books was part of this strategy. And bringing people to India was Prabhupada's strategy. That's why he spent all his money in making this, like the TOVP is coming up, Vrindavan, Mayapur, and, and Juhu. Prabhupada put his time and energy into these projects. So, yeah, it's a, a comprehensive books is part of it. It's a major part. It's a key part. And uh, to get people to read and, and, but, and then to realize and to follow, it, it's a tough task. And, uh, you know, but we have to, right? We have to, uh, we have to undertake it. We're propagating it. Prabhupada's guru told him, Bhakti Siddhanta told him, if you ever get money, print books, right? So, I mean, this is uh, age old. Age old is to study Shastras, to study Vedas, to study Mah Mahabharata, Panchama Veda. So Bhagavad Gita is, you know, the moksha. What is it? The moksha granta, the, the, the part of the Mahabharata deals with moksha. Liberation from the repetition of birth, death, old age, and disease. Sorry, again, I think I, I went too no, long. Okay. All right. Maybe, um, maybe if you had a three-minute warning. <laughs> okay. No. Actually, okay, uh, one, one final uh, will be, we are approaching time. Uh, <clears throat> Bhakti Vinod Maharaj, I'll direct this point that neophytes sometimes have uh, new members that they find, uh, you know, when you go to walk into, let's say, Iskan Vrindavan or Mayapur stall, you find an array of books, you know, by Goswami works and this and that, and some Srila Prabhupada books are hidden in between somewhere. And uh, they find it uh, that Srila Prabhupada books are repetitive. Like, you know, you are not the body, probably n number of Bhagavad purports are repeating that. So Maharaj, Bhaktivinoda Maharaj, what do you say on the point is that sometime you see Tattva Sandarbha pick up a book, oh, it sounds more interesting than, you know, that. so Maharaj, <laughs> uh, what, what well, you, 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 you really put me on the spot. That's a sensitive thing. <laughs> okay. But since you asked this question, hmm. uh, at least in my areas where I am directly in charge as a zonal secretary, I mostly display only Prabhupada's books. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, that's one thing you can see on the book tables that you take it. If you want the other books, you can, you know, find it all over the place. But very rarely I would recommend some books which are so nicely connected with Prabhupada's books. And uh, it's interesting. But that's the point. And I want to say that leaders should, irrespective of certain challenges or points borrowed by Vasugosh Prabhu here about other things, tradition and types of learning and pedagogy that we would adopt to uh, disseminate this knowledge. That's another big discussion. But irrespective of all that, it's the mandate of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada that we should scrutinizingly study his books. I just peeped in now. If you can allow me to share the screen, I just want to show you the amount of time yeah. Prabhupada has mentioned. I just picked it out of the uh, yeah. this thing. It's a very amazing thing. So I just wanted to show you this, which I picked up from this Vanipedia. This is the amount of times Prabhupada has spoken about and instructed devotees to study books in terms of the frequency, the mood, and the method. There are 60 ways. And frequency is, again and again, you should read my books. Always, as much as possible, as soon as you get time. At least one hour daily, at least one or two hours, at least three hours, constantly, continuously, daily, in small in sermons, more and more, da, 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 repeatedly, throughout the day, as much as possible. Mood, as it is spoken by Krishna, adeptly, attentively, carefully, critically, deeply, devotedly, diligently, expertly, faithfully, intensely, nicely, penetratingly, persistently, philosophically, profoundly, profusely, you name it. And method, from all angles of vision, from different lights of directions, from every point of view, from varieties of angles, inspecting the subject matter for all angles of approach and savoring the new understandings, to understand the subject matter from different angles of vision by discussing them, by association devotees, in cooperation with their god brothers and sisters, scientifically scrutinizing these stuff, you name it. I just, you know, these are all picked up from yeah. Prabhupada's instructions on his books. I mean, what more can be said? So I don't think that, although there are challenges to do with uh, how we will teach the content of these books, there's no doubt this is gold. The content behind them is the great intent of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada and the previous Acharyas, Lord Chaitanya, Krishna and everybody. And they're all watching it happen. Uh, so there's no doubt that we have to do that in some way or the other. As for Sticking to Prabhupada's books, I don't mind like Bhakti uh, Rasamrita Maharaj said that you get guides and you have some senior devotees explaining uh, through a guide how to make it a little easier and approachable and uh, more relishable, etc. But one dialogue that I want to cite here is Prabhupada being approached by one of his disciples. It's there in the Prabhupada Nectar book by Satsuruk Maharaj, where he's coming to Prabhupada and uh, glorifying Bhaktivinoda Thakur's writing. He's saying that Bhaktivinoda Thakur is writings of wonderful Prabhupada. They are amazing. I like them very much. And Prabhupada just gives a mm, uh, very nicely. And then afterwards, he goes ahead and keeps speaking and said, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is my favorite author. He says this to Prabhupada. And Prabhupada puts his specs down, lowers it down, and then looks at him straight in the eye and says, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is your second favorite author. This is an amazing statement he made to him and said he is your second favorite author. And period, that's it, he said. In other words, it's a strong instruction saying that read my books first. Before even you read the other Acharya's books, this is what I understand in very simple terms. Get I have put all of those teachings inside here and made it fit for the next 10,000 years. And he said, I'll never die. I'll live in my books forever. So considering these statements made by Prabhupada, I don't want to speak it in terms of absolutism and all that type of statement. Prabhupada knows what he is doing. And I have deep faith that if we follow these instructions of sticking to Prabhupada's books, have a foundational understanding of the Krishna consciousness philosophy from Prabhupada's books. And when you're quite much educated properly, then you can make some foray 
for more understanding into some other acharyas works and everything like that otherwise that's the meaning of the founder acharya his foundational teachings is what we are all based on books are the basis and you can't go anywhere this way or that way without first covering that and being firmly situated on that foundation and i think it's a duty of all of us as leaders to institute that first founder acharya's teachings his foundational books everybody should know that as much as their intellect allows they should stretch themselves and get to know it otherwise how are we going to change the world it's these devotees who will actually go and speak their understanding to the people outside if they don't have a proper understanding foundationally of the philosophy sometimes i don't know some things that people speak i think are not gaudi vaishnava philosophy many times i see they speak uh, to become popular that and and with the, with the coming of the social media these things are all to be discussed in a great way you have to know that you have to very carefully scrutinize the study and understand it takes a lot of reading to understand what propad is really saying sometimes and then we look into the world we see aha no wonder propad is saying this you hit it hits you like a thunderbolt a propad's words are in my opinion and experience till now very prophetic very foundational extremely important to a devotee's life and to a preaching and to the future so that foundation understanding we have to institute very thoroughly and like pastor gosh prabhu said it's you know a little not mlecha type of teaching or like you said books are too traditional all those things are small patchworks are enough to set that right but we should understand the principle the foundational principle the foundational teachings it's the same uh, like krishna said that imam vivaspate yogam proktavan aham yabbayam vivaswan manave praha you know manurikshvaka ve abhravit and and prabhupad is explaining in that purport that the same stuff that krishna spoke 120 million years ago is being written down now by me into these books it's not a joke it's it's very difficult to do and prabhupad has done that and he was very careful and also very afraid and scared that people will screw it up in the future sakala neha mahata yogo nashta parantapa it got destroyed krishna is saying because of a tendency like this it invariably happens over a period of time that gets if you look at the history of harvard john harvard statue you'll see the biggest donor it all started to perpetuate and perpetrate christianity and the teachings of christianity you know that it says veritas and it says christos el ecclesiae it says truth uh towards christ or something like that and this is the truth veritas and that's how it started it's just a christian missionary thing meant to propagate christianity and academic stuff and over a period of time it completely swerved from that into something else now it's harvard university they don't speak about any religion much although in their certificate they have this christo something but it's gone they don't speak about it anymore so i am i am also very concerned that people should keep that foundation pinned down and it's it's on the basis of the books and if you pin the books down and make sure that we educate everybody properly everything else will go you don't have to attend to many things too much it'll all go pretty well that's my firm feeling uh and i think a power cut has struck our moderator also no he's well, back i have a, i have 8 o'clock the internet goes off so i forgot to do it anyway it's okay yes okay. so maras thank you i will, what i uh, now i would uh, our time is uh, almost up it is so we have a rare uh, rare uh, what you call a congregation or collection i'm in uh, assembly here my i start with uh, his holiness uh, bhakti samit maharaj decades ago we all most of us all of most of us have joined by reading this books and we came in devotee association so now a personal uh, testimonies and a personal story just very briefly maharaj bhakti samat maharaj how you got connected to shila in what way shila prabhupad books inspired you yourself to dedicate yourself to istan movement maharaj yeah i think the first thing that struck me was 
the clarity, coherence, and uh, the emphasis that Srila Prabhupada was giving in his books. Everything was so clear and so firm. I was used to reading so many other books where well, this could be like this, it could be like that. And there was a certain decisiveness <clears throat> and clarity which I didn't find anywhere else. And it was like a whole new universe opening up. So I think that exposure to this kind of knowledge was, was like a thunderbolt that struck. And as when one went deeper and deeper into it, uh, then naturally the number of questions also increased. And therefore I found the need for associating with uh, devotees, uh, where many of these questions would get clarified. So I think re reading Srila Prabhupada's books opens up a new world. And when one comes to the association of devotees, one understands the, the meaning of these books better. Uh, so for me, both these, both these things happened simultaneously. And uh, I think without the books, it would not have been possible. So I think it was because we are, I think, running out of time, I appreciate. So I'll just say that I think primarily because it was of the clarity and the one-pointed uh, focus and the conviction that Srila Prabhupada had on this that really attracted me to these books. Thank you, Mahasaya. <laughs> Prabhu. So, uh, of course, every devotee in the West or India has a story. So, how, uh, in what way books inspired you? What's your story, Basu Ghosh Prabhu? Uh, yeah, my actually joining ISKCON came about by reading Bhagavad Gita as it is. The way, way back, uh, I think I got it. Gita at the Chicago Temple in the end of December 1972. And uh, over that Christmas vacation period, you know, when life in this country comes to a standstill for about 10 days, I read the entire translation in English and half of the purports. And then shortly thereafter, we had uh, at ISKCON, Chicago was in Evanston, near Northwestern University, which is one of the top universities in the US. Uh, I would go to Gita class in the evening. And so the Gita class was run like this, that the whole chapter translations would be read out loud. And then a lecture would be given on one verse. And, and afterwards, everyone was given hot milk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Hot milk was, uh, wasn't a habit for us. Neither was hearing Gita. So that left a deep impression. And that went on for three weeks. In, I think it was January of 73. And by the middle of 73, February, I had moved into the temple. So, you know, definitely reading Bhagavad Gita with Prabhupada's. Before Prabhupada's Gita, I was very young, but I had seen, I had another edition of Gita that, that was Annie Basant's translation. And, you know, I couldn't get by the first few verses. It was all unintelligible. It wasn't explained well. And Prabhupada's explanation was, you know, uh, simple, but uh, at the same time, informative and, and more comprehensive or, you know, what, what, what's the word that I should use? Uh, it, it made it clear what the meaning of each verse was. And especially in the first chapter, when there's a lot of names right off the bat, you know, right at the beginning. And those names for Westerners, even for Indians, you know, these names are not common anymore. Chekitana, Kashi Raj, maybe people would understand. You know, Burishrava. Uh, you know, the name Dhritarashtra, Drishtiketu, Drishtadyumna, these are not common names in India today. So unless you had some background in Mahabharata, you wouldn't understand. So the way Prabhupada explained it made it understandable. Thank you, Prabhu. You see, this, how this, this, these words, they cut right through the, our heart's conditioning 
and kind of drags us to the liberated platform. You know, you can surrender to Krishna. Just imagine the potency contained in these words. So Maharaj, Bhakti Vinod Maharaj, what's your story all about? Uh, actually, we discovered Krishna consciousness in Juhu. I was at IIT Mumbai waiting to enter a course and uh, a master's in design course and I had written the exam, it was almost through. Uh, many things happened. I think there was Madhu Pandit, myself and Jagat Chandra together. Uh, uh, and uh, we were making forays to the temple, eating the free prasadam in the life membership line and getting the puris and the sabjis and everything. I think they were even made in ghee or something. It was so tasty, halwa. That's the time when I got a Science of Self-Realization book. And uh, I read it and it really, you know, made a quite a shift in the way I understood religion and uh, things. I like that very much, the book. That's the book that, uh, you know, pushed me up. And then we used to have discussions on this book and then we got into the Bhagavad Gita and then that's how the whole thing started for me. Uh, and I didn't do any course in the this thing. I came back and did a job in Bangalore. And after that, I very dedicatedly started reading Prabhupada's books. I Right at first sight, I fell in love with Prabhupada's books because it was clear and Prabhupada made no bones about saying what he wants to say. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The absolute truth is a person. He is Krishna. God means this. It is very amazing how, how daringly he says these things. So I thought that this type of uh, person who is so sure about the things that he is saying uh, and uh, is backing it up with the philosophy in his books, everything was very impressive. First time I could get a understanding of religion, although I was born in a Brahmin family and I've seen my mother performing three hours puja every day and a whole lot of ritualistic stuff was happening. I never knew the philosophical portion of it much. It was religiously bent, but uh, the philosophy, it came through Prabhupada's books and I was immensely happy to get answers to questions that I always had. And all my queries and inquisitiveness and everything from leaps to bound, I mean, leap and bounds went ahead and I integrated myself with the congregation and asked questions and I found it's truly wealthy to read this. I mean, it's a great wealthy tome of, uh, you know, books that we can have, that we can read and we can understand. That was my first experience. And uh, after that, there has no been turning yeah. back. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah, Maharaj, thank you. Yeah, this is like, you know, these words, they strike you like bullets. And uh, mm. like you know, Chetan Chetamut, uh, what's the verse he says is Ramanan Rai said, Who is that an archer? What is the use of an archer? It doesn't pierce the heart of a poet whose poetry doesn't pierce. So it's like, you know, placing a bomb under your chin and blows everything to smithereens. Like this is what, yeah, so I'll, I'll conclude with, <laughs> I think our time is up. Thank you. So, <clears throat> Thank you, everybody. It was really enlightening. Jai Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Thank you.